Okay. So thank you, Mr. Open, for uh, joining us. So okay. we have with us the DT unicorns who've been with us for six months or more who are driving, you know, some strategic growth of different organizations. And mm -hmm. they really want to learn from you some advice on how they can grow as organization builders rather than mere employees. So maybe mm -hmm. I have 10 minutes for your advice followed by Q&A. Sure. Okay. okay. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. I think uh, I would say that my kids are there. Good evening, my children. Uh, my name is Govind Rajan and uh, I've been uh, in the IT industry for more than 30 years. And the last 10 years, we become a social entrepreneur. Me, myself and uh, two other partners, we started a school venture in Bangalore. Our brand name is Samshit International School. So we have now 18 schools across India. And uh, coming year, we are moving up to 20 now. Okay, and uh, we follow CBSE guidelines. And we also have a EdTech company. The EdTech company predominantly, you know, takes care of the school requirements like ERP, LMS, and um, a te for teachers upskill. And uh, plus the, the whatever the new inventions on the EdTech space, uh, we, we have been trying to, you know, implement uh, across all our schools. So... Uh, to give a little bit more info about me, I did my post-graduation computer science engineering and uh, worked with the majors like Tata's. I started my career with Tata's in 1988, uh, Tata Consultancy Services, as from the campus. I passed out from NIT Trichy. Okay, the MS I did my, uh, from NIT Trichy. So then uh, after that, uh, TCS, I joined uh, CityCorp. Then I moved to Oracle. Then uh, I worked with uh, Oracle. I spent more than 10 years in different geographies. Then post that, I moved to Mysis in India, came back to Bangalore in 2004. I came back to Bangalore. Then I bought, spent about six years with Mysis, the banking system. And uh, that time only the, you know, the school project, you know, came to our uh, mind and uh, we wanted to experience, you know, the different uh, domain. And also, we are very passionate about uh, school, children. Uh, the main reason is we come from teacher's family. My father was a school headmaster, government school headmaster in Tamil Nadu. And similarly, my partner's parents were also teachers. So we come from a teacher's family. That's why I think our uh, we like that, you know, the education space. And uh, we started um, uh, the school. Um, the only difference is that... Uh, uh, we work very closely with uh, uh, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar and uh, Chait, uh, you know, uh, Chinmaya, all the people to inculcate value system in our kids. So our academics is purely integrated with values. We are not into IITs and uh, NEET and all this stuff. Our primary focus is to inculcate uh, value system in our children. Uh, that's the way. That's why you know our LMS also def designed and implemented. So every uh, chapter we have uh, you know values for every chapter. So that's the way we have trained our teachers to inculcate values, and uh, the students also you know completely got engrossed into the knowledge with values. Okay. So these are these are you know kind of a brief intro about myself. Um. In Oracle, I got into leadership position. Um, before that, I was, you know, kind of a lead analyst or project manager or technical manager. Kind of, I'm a pure techie guy. I'm not a, a project management or program management person. And so, so far, I mean, uh, I've been focusing only on the technology side. So in Oracle, only I got the uh, taste of uh, management part because Oracle believed in uh, grooming the leadership. So I was one of the... Um, person, you know, uh, considered for leadership position. And I got trained in TAS, Tata Administrative Service in Pune. So it's a corporate uh, training program. And I got trained on the management on how to run a practice. So post that, I got elevated to as a country head for Oracle in India on the technology practice. So I was managing the uh, complete technology practice for Oracle India. So post that, I joined MySys. I was head of the um, uh, MySys banking uh, operations in India. It's basically, the product development. 
we were focusing on retail banking. So I was heading the retail banking uh, product uh, division. Then, you know, uh, uh, spent a couple of, uh, I did one, one and a half years with the oddly, the aggregator kind of a thing. Then I said, the enough is enough, then uh, moved to school. So here I'm managing the school, uh, you know, operations kind of a thing, along with my partners. And also focusing on the growth. So in terms of leadership scale, uh, leadership role, I think the last uh, uh, 18 years, 15 to 18 years, I've been in the leadership role. Before that, I was, you know, purely a individual or a kind of a contributor role. Um, it is a, I would say that it is not a easy ride. It is basically you need to really uh, feel the feet on the ground before you really go up in the ladder. And it's all, uh, you know, I learned everything in a hard way, completely hard way. And uh, we have been exposed to different challenges both in terms of revenue and uh, in terms of employee satisfaction and customer satisfaction. So we had lots of challenges in terms of um, the operations part, the customer satisfaction part. Because in technology industry, right, you won't be able to satisfy any customer. Okay, if you, if you're, um, you know, if you're able to satisfy 80% of their, you know, customer's requirement, then you are done. You can't satisfy every customer 100%. It is very tough. So in Oracle, uh, we have been groomed in a way that, you know, uh, the customer is the king. Okay, so everything is uh, focusing towards customer because we need to play to the gallery. Okay, so my sincere advice to you guys is, you know, customer is the king and, um, and we are here to provide solutions to the customer problem. We are the solution providers. Okay, come what may, whatever the uh, technological challenges are there, uh, I think we should be able to overcome that, and uh, we can provide solution to the customers. If you, uh, I mean, if you really look at the current uh, state of you know affairs, we have lots of social challenges are there, and you know most of the IT companies are really uh, coming up to solve all the social. Uh, issues, you know, uh, emanating around the world. Okay, so if you look at the uh, the invention of AI, IOTs, machine learning, and IOTs, and all this stuff, everything is focusing on solving the social issues. Okay, so I think I see a very very bright future for youngsters like you. You have lots of opportunities to opportunities, you know, explore and you know experience the. Uh, the you know the outside world, and you know you can gain lots of expertise on that. So, um, if you look at the world, you know the lots of challenges we have. You can probably as an youngster, you can take up one particular challenge. Probably you know on the ecosystem, um, you know around you know whatever the ecosystem we have. At least probably you can look at how we can solve uh, you know the uh, climatic conditions or whatever. We, we can take up one particular challenge, we can do it. There are lots of challenges in healthcare side. There are lots of challenges in education side. Okay, if you look at, uh, let me, you know, give a, um, uh, let me do a deep dive in education side, which is very close to my heart right now. In education, is a uh, lots of disparities are there. Too much of, uh, you know, differentiation and discrimination. We are not giving uniform education to everyone. Okay, so... There's an opportunity for you guys to come up with a solution using AI and IoT to come up with a solution to all the, you know, children of India or the world. So that, you know, the uniform education can be given through government schools or private schools through uh, the solution you, you know, come up with. Right now, we don't have this kind of solutions at all. Now, whoever has got the money can invest and, you know, come up with uh, some technological advancement solutions, but, you know, it is not percolating down. So, youngsters like you can take up this challenge and come up with a very cost-effective solution, cost-effective solution for the, uh, you know, the local uh, uh, tier one, uh, sorry, tier two, tier three, tier four schools. This is one particular challenge we have on education side. Uh, second thing is, you know, the, uh, you know, we can also try to, help the teachers because, you know, if you look at the uh, in the current world, internet world, 
and uh, with the advent of social media, most of the kids like you are ahead of the teachers or professors in terms of knowledge and in terms of even, I would say, the kind of skill set. So you guys can, why don't you help your gurus? You can come up with a tool or a solution to your teachers. Okay, fine, this is a tool, the teachers, so that at least they are also you know, kept abreast of all the developments happening around the world in the technology space or in education space. Right now, they do have mobile phones, they do have exposure to internet and all this stuff, but still, they don't have time to, you know, do a deep dive and get those, you know, knowledge or information. So you can come up with a very user-friendly app and, you know, with the help of AI, at least, you know, we can give them kind of tidbits every day, you know, some kind of a tidbits we can give to the teachers so that they know what's happening in the world in terms of technological advancements. So that, you know, they also can, uh, you know, participate in, participate in meaningful discussion with the students. Right now, they are completely, you know, let off from the lots of technology advancements. So this is the reason we also, we have come up with a solution for our teachers, the upskill kind of a thing. So you can also come up with a solution for the teachers that would really benefit our society. The other one, you now, uh, from my experience, is, uh, is basically on the security part, the data security and cyber security. Okay. Uh, I would uh, really advise the youngsters, you know, to really focus on data security because, you know, we are still completely exposed, you know, uh, uh, from the data theft or cyber uh, issues. So come up with the, you know, quick and easily implementable solution uh, to the society so that, you know, every citizen is protected from the data part. Right now, it is all, you know, the, every bank has got, every telecom industry has got, it is all purely domain specific, you know, uh, they have some solution. But as a citizen, right, we don't have any uh, solution to protect us. Okay. In the US and other Western countries, right, the, uh, the you know, the government is spending uh, money and effort on coming up with, uh, you know, a solution to protect the citizens. Unfortunately, in India, uh, even other card can be, you know, hacked. Everything can be hacked. Your bank account can be hacked. Everything can be hacked. So you guys can come up with a solution to help our Indian citizens, you know, in terms of providing their uh, safety and the security over data. And they are not again like, exposed to any kind of cyber crimes. The other, uh, you know, industry which we need lots of help from the youngsters on healthcare. Okay. You know, most of the... Uh, uh, healthcare equipments we are still importing. Even normal X-ray machines, if you take it, or uh, uh, even oximeter, everything is being imported. Okay. So, we need to really come up with a kind of IoT. This is all purely completely IoT. Okay. So, you guys can really think of a kind of a, um, affordable solution for Indian hospitals on you know, devices like X-ray machines or scan, you know, scan machines kind of stuff, which you now we are relying on uh, cheap, uh, you know, machines from China, cheap softwares, those, you know, reading softwares are very cheap softwares. And if you look at it, uh, you know, uh, it varies from one uh, scan center to another scan center. I'm sure uh, if you're having a old age, uh, grandparents, all this stuff, you go for a scan, uh, the doctor may not accept it. They might to ask, uh, you know, refer someone. And if you compare the reports, the reports, you know, show different results. So the software is not very authentic and the software is not a quality software. And the machine also is not giving right readings kind of a stuff. So we need, uh, you know, people like you to provide some kind of digital solution to healthcare problem wherein, you know, at least it would really help us, uh, help India uh, to a large extent on the healthcare side. So lots of opportunities we have in terms of tech space, healthcare, and uh, data and cyber security. I think you know other industries are very mature right now. If you look at banking, if you look at insurance industry, if you look at telecom industry, all of them are very mature right now and they are able to sustain it. But uh, these are the areas where you know we lack funds from the government side. If you look at in India. Uh, uh, typically worldwide, you know, they spend about more than 6% of their GDP into education side, 
whereas in India we spend only two percent to three percent. So still we are very lagging behind on edtech space, education, technology space, and uh, on the research and everything. So we need lots of solutions on that. And similarly, healthcare also. Healthcare is not uh, available to each and every citizen of India. Okay, so please focus on healthcare, ed education space, and the data security. And these are the booming side, I would say, in the years to come. Okay, so this is my humble request, and you guys can do it. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Mr. Govind, for the detailed uh, you know, uh, overview of what youngsters could do. So we'll now move into the Q&A. So whoever has a question, please unmute yourself and ask a question. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you. Thanks for spending time with us, first of all. Uh, I mean, I, there are a lot of follow-up questions I have based on different yeah. industries you spoke about. But the first thing that caught up my mind was uh, you, uh, you know, specifically talked about value systems in your school. What I'm curious about is how do you measure value systems in schools or, you know, in kids? Since yes. it's a five-year, ten-year, good long journey, and you're looking tracking you know, development patterns, which take a really long time, mm -hmm. I'm sure you would have seen some metrics on how you, you know, measure yes. that also. So, anything yes. about that? Yeah. See, uh, what we have done is we have have a uh, the three important values we are trying to inculcate in uh, kids' mind. One is compassion. Uh, compassion to yourself, compassion to uh, you know others, and compassion to health. Normal earth, you know, um, you know, um, it could be animals, could be birds or whatever, even to the earth. Don't, you know, we uh, try uh, simple things, you know, don't litter on the road. Don't use plastics. Okay. So very simple things, you know, that's what, you know, the children can learn. Okay. And compassion to yourself means, you know, don't eat junk food. It is going to, uh, you know, affect your stomach. You're going to fall ill. Okay, so simple thing. Similarly, you know, don't, um, you know, drench in the train. At least use your umbrella. Or simple things so that, you know, your health is taken care. Because unless and until you take care of yourself, then you can take care of others. That's a compassion to yourself. And similarly, next one, we are talking about the sharing and caring. So what you do is, you know, uh, we always tell that, you know, the children is go and help your mother in the kitchen. Go and help your father in whatever you could do, you do it. Okay, so we in, encourage the parents also to take a snap of it in case the child is coming and helping, you know, going and helping the mother in terms of, you know, sweeping or mopping or even cutting vegetables kind of stuff or any small help. You know, take the photo, at least we can show the other student. Then, you know, every student also will start learning from that. So sharing and caring is very important. Okay, and if they have siblings, you know, share everything. Whatever you have, share it. Okay, so we have, I mean, in Sri Sri Ravi Shankar's one thing, very important thing is they said that uh, giving is a pleasure, not the taking one. Okay, so we always encourage people to give the knowledge or could be anything. So we are, you know, from the childhood, we are, you know, inculcating one important giving is more, uh, sac uh, you know, sacred thing kind of a thing. So that's the way we are promoting the uh, sharing and caring. Okay, the other one is happiness. Okay, the happiness quotient is very important. Right now, we are talking about emotional quotient, intelligent quotient, all this stuff. Right? But no one is measuring the happiness quotient. Okay, how the happiness quotient can be measured is if the child is coming to school with a happy face and similarly, when they uh, go to the uh, go back home, if they start sharing what has happened on, the, on a day-to-day -day basis with the parents, right? One is they, they're able to express it. They're ex able to express the happiness kind of thing. And next day, they don't feel, you know, bored to come back to school. For them, every day there's a challenge, lots of challenges in the school. So it improves the happiness quotient. If you improve the happiness quotient, right, automatically they will be very emotionally balanced. Okay, so this is the kind of proof of the pudding we have. Okay, we measured the, the grit uh, thing for the 10th grade and 12th grade students. If their happiness quotient is very high, they are emotionally balanced. If they're emotionally balanced, obviously the IQ level is going up. Okay, so they are all completely correlated. Okay, so that's the reason we just focus on uh, uh, important thing is like in integrity, uh, happiness, and the compassion. Because integrity is very important as a young uh, child, 
okay we really focus on the integrity part you have to do whether somebody is watching it or not you have to do the right things okay so if you are if you are going to the you know the prayer right uh, typically the pt master blows the whistle and you know everyone stands in line and they walk right that you must say so we are what we are saying is no here we don't have the pt master to whistle it you guys stand in line you walk whether anybody watching or not you don't care about you don't worry about it you have to do your job okay so if you look at our school automatically you know, when they go when they get out get down from the bus they form a line and they just go very peacefully to the classrooms without any kind of you know um you know um, uh, monitoring or supervising kind of stuff okay so this is very small the integrity is very important thing okay in the classroom how we inculcate values is very simple you take mathematics you know simple subtraction okay so we give a practical example uh, suppose you know i am supposed to give you 5 rupees after you buy something by mistake i gave you 7 rupees what the child is supposed to do they supposed to return the 2 rupees back right okay so this kind of small small activities we do in the classroom to you know inculcate the integrity quotient in their minds because integrity is very very important okay for a child okay so this is the way we um, you know integrate our values in the every uh, lesson we have uh, you know integrated the values could be uh, from the these three only integrity uh, integrity mean honesty uh, also will be there. and have uh, uh, compassion and uh, happiness uh, mr govind uh, i request if you can keep the answers a little uh, short it will yeah, sure. uh, go to and fro with uh, the sure, questions sure. so ranganath would you have uh, a, a, you know question uh, to the answer or you want to take a fresh thread yeah somebody else can go with a fresh oh, thread sounds good I... anybody else who has a question please feel free to go ahead Uh, and general reminder: Hope you're all uh, thread building. Yeah. So, anybody else has a question? Please go ahead. Yeah, Omkar, please go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Sir, actually, I am very excited to know. Like, you have spent thirty years in, uh, particularly the IT sector, or you have been since working. now all this so like uh, as you said first at first position you were individual contributor then you went to a uh, leadership role then you started after few days you started your own thing right so yes. what changes did you see during this your whole journey yourself yes when i was a digital contributor i had lots of ego okay ego being that i'm i'm okay i know everything kind of a stuff when you get into a team when i become a team player right then all my egos are gone so the i started receiving the uh, you know feedback and able to listen carefully uh, patiently receive all the feedback and then started contributing to the team success okay this i learned in city cop okay because there they gave emphasis on team build team uh, you know success so there i learned it once you start working as a team player then you know graduating to leadership role is very very simple okay because in leadership role you are going to work as a team okay you have to um, uh, you know you have to be a kind of a ground up person and you have to be completely you know hands on person so if you want to be a hands on person then you need to be a very good team player and you need to take the team along with you okay so this is what i learned in oracle basically i've just graduated from a team player to a leadership role where i really honed my uh, you know uh, team building skills out there in oracle so this is the way i graduated myself okay ego is the only thing which i still A regret in my life. Oh, I should not have that, you know, in my first uh, experience with Tata's. Yeah, that slowly I came out of that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Govind. Yeah, uh, audio Shagun, and then Ranganath can go after that. Yeah. So in the threads, uh, hello, sir. I'm Shagun. 
uh, I just want to ask in the threads you discuss about customer satisfaction in the uh, application or I would say because you we discussed that customer is a god that's what you learned in Oracle. So what is the uh, measurement mechanism which uh, in the application the product uh, which we can use to ensure or gather the customer satisfaction like we as a developer or a coder if you are building an application so how we can get it measured ki these are uh, if uh, these are the measurement criteria or parameters through which our customers are satisfied so you need to understand uh, whom you are talking to suppose in a customer there are multiple stakeholders are there okay the one stakeholder is the end user which they are going to use your system okay for them is very simple your solution works or not that is more important you know on a day to day basis uh, they said okay my uh, job is uh, you know i got some free time by using your software i am able to focus on some other stuff and really this you know this particular software helps my uh, to improve my productivity okay this is what every employee feels fine and uh, second thing is uh, um second stakeholder for you is is important thing is the the management so the your customer management okay see what they look at is there are three important things they look at it one is the total cost of ownership of your solution tco we call it okay so they want to have a minimal tco okay for example nowadays you know earlier we used to ask the server customer to buy the servers desktops you know high end desktops lots of softwares and everything nowadays it is the is the the you know the advent of cloud you know is really helped us to bring down the cost on the customer side so tco is one thing they look at it whether as a vendor you are helping them to reduce the total cost of ownership second thing is they will be looking at return on investment roi okay this was very very important because um, if you deal with the uh, uh, big organization uh, you know to the tune of you know anybody is working over 50 crores kind of stuff right so they would be looking at the return on investment because if your solution is you know uh, say as if that is about 2 crores plus the recurring maintenance cost is there so they would be looking at recovering this 2 crores you know by multiple couple of means one is their increase in sales the revenue part and second one is their uh, retention of the employees because if you keep changing the employees the training cost would go up so for them the roi is only two things one is whether they are able to um, uh, the, the your the software vendor is helping them to increase the revenue depending on the application and second thing is is it the, the particular software really helping my um, employee to be satisfied that level and they been retained in the corporate for longer period so that my training cost goes down so this roi they will be looking at it third one is their equity okay brand equity okay how are we helping the brand equity as you mean that you are doing a crm project for a particular customer so they would be looking at along with tco or roi they also look at the brand equity how you are helping them in the brand equity in terms of your solution part okay or you uh, um, you know helping them in terms of you know coming up with uh, uh, new campaigns with uh, uh, you know with a kind of a budgetary cost kind of thing are you able to save money in that you know campaigns are you able to uh help them in terms of uh, uh, acquiring customers kind of a stuff so your crm solution how effective it is okay that's the other one they would be looking at it okay so in in oracle i focus only on two things the tco and roi and uh, i never got an opportunity to work on the crm part these two things i worked on it so uh, one end my with my solution oracle apps uh, you know implementation solution i ensured that the my employees are satisfied and they and uh, their productivity is increased okay so the employee felt very happy that okay my day to day job is become easy and uh, easily maintainable and i have uh, uh, time to relax okay instead of doing manual work for the company we focused on tco and or roi thank you sir govind uh, who is going into the next question Can I? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let Shavan go in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hi, sir. So, uh, basically, uh, my question is again around the same uh, sentence, right? Customer is the king. So, I mean, uh, one question basically that I mean, basically, when I work on any development of any any things, right? Like, say, be it any app or any website. 
So uh, one thing that every developer makes mistakes is uh, not empathizing with the customers, right? So when a developer actually codes, right? So uh, we are always some sometimes into our own dreams, right? Like, okay, maybe these things can be good, uh, right? So we sometimes focus on, I mean, just doing over engineering, right? So Correct. not exactly empathizing with what the customer wants, right? So any practices that you have followed or like if you would like to share with us so that we yes. could like, Solve this, yeah. Yes. So, Shaman is basically, you know, I really, uh, uh, you know, uh, indebted much to Tata's. Okay. Uh, Tata learned, uh, gave a uh, excellent, you uh, know, uh, coaching on one thing is domain expertise. Okay. So, before we undertake any project, because I, in TCS, I spent about seven years and I worked on uh, three different domains, uh, starting from, um, a banking domain, I moved to telecom domain and moved to railways, basically transportation domain. So the first thing is they said is if you want to appreciate your customer pain points is at least you have to learn, know, know about the domain part, what they are into, what kind of business they are into. So the first one month of our project, you know, goes into understanding of the domain. Then only we will be able to appreciate their pain points. So if you look at the most of the people, right, in the current, you know, uh, trend, the most of the developers, they won't know the domain. If you don't know the domain, assuming that, Shavan, you are working with the education sector right now, okay, Aswasa, right? You need to know a little bit about what we do in the education side, in the school side, or what we are trying to do for the teachers. What are their pain points? Okay, if you understand their pain points, right, then you can come up with a solution. There's no problem at all. Okay, the problem with uh, the current uh, uh, crop of uh, young guys is they just, you know, do the uh, doer's job rather than, you know, the kind of a thinker's or creator's job. Okay, so there's a problem with the current, if you look at the current uh, uh, MNCs, right, they don't treat the uh, freshers, uh, you know, like creators. They are just doers kind of a thing. Okay, so we expect this kind of startup like you guys, right, to focus now to more on the domain part and be a creators of a creators of the solution rather than you become a technical guy for our project okay so this is my sincere request to you all of you is understand the domain part at least you know you should know the working knowledge of the particular domain you don't we don't we are not asking you to do a deep dive at least with the working knowledge okay how the school works how the teacher works what the teacher wants what are the pain points of teachers in the classroom, what the what is the expectation of the teacher, and what is the expectation of students? So, if you have this kind of basic things, right? Yeah, then you can come up with an excellent solution, and you can do. You do, you are talking about over engineering. It's not over engineering. You can come up with a very you know kind of a creative solution and a very innovative solution to teachers, which is getting they are getting attracted towards the solution. Right now, if you give a very bland solution to the teacher, they may not even use it. They may not even use it at all. So uh, my my sincere request is please understand the domain part a little bit. Focus on domain part before you get into the solution. Right now, everyone jumps into the solution first. I think that's what we integrate. In our discussion also, we talk about the only the functionality part. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So domain is important. Got it. Uh, so who wants to go into the next question? Uh, Raghunath, you want to go in? Yes. Uh, sir, I take you back to one of the previous yeah. threads. So uh, you were talking about your leadership uh, journey, right? So, okay. So, you know, uh, when we are a little self-aware, it's great. But as a leader and, you know, in your journey now, even when you're heading an organization, often when you see when managers or, you know, when somebody is getting promoted, that's when a little bit of ego builds in that, okay, you know, that now that I've promoted, I have a, suddenly I have a 10 member team and now I'm a know it all. And so as a leader, how would you tackle that? Or, you know, how would you uh, deal with managers who are technically sound very much needed for organization, but with their, uh, you know, people problems or, you know, with their ego challenges? Yeah. <clears throat> see, uh... Everyone has got different style of doing it. And uh, um, I'll just give you an example of how we got trained in TAS, okay, TAS Administrative Service. 
uh, how we got trained is that you know um, the first of all the managers were, you know if, if I've been promoted and uh, uh, overlooking few seniors in the team uh, maybe technocrats or could be a very good business guys right if I've been promoted over uh, over and above them. So the first uh, thing, uh, you know, advice, uh, task is given, I mean, trained us is on one thing, being assertive. Okay. You need to be very assertive. You don't need to be aggressive, but you need to be very assertive. Okay. So because the company has seen some value in you. Okay. So that is more important because that particular value they don't see in, in the other uh, technocrats and other senior people in the team. So they've seen some value and they've seen some, you know, uh, the kind of spark in your eyes. And they know that if I invest on this particular guy and I am going to get this kind of fruits in that one or two years time. So this, your management has got, you got a management backing with you because otherwise they would not have selected you at all. So you should be rest assured that you got a management backing, that you have been promoted. Second thing is you be assertive, right? That you are not no longer inferior to them. So you may not be you know, technically uh, more sound than, you know, the technocrats in your team, but you have the basic uh, skill set in terms of understanding the what the technocrat is talking about. So he can't fool around you. Okay. So that much of knowledge you have, so that at least you can moderate it. Okay. Because you basically you would be uh, playing a role as a leader. Is one is you would be a facilitator between two different groups. You have to facilitate it, or you can be a moderator. Okay. When you talk about two different stakeholders, you can be a, you can moderate it. When the conflict of uh, when the conflict is arises, you can do a moderation part, and if you wanted the team, you want to build a solution, you can do a facilitation role kind of a thing. Okay, so uh, we have been trained on one thing: managing the conflicts is very important thing. That you know how you are managing the conflict is very important. Uh, second thing is they also they also taught us you know being very unbiased kind of a thing. Look at both the sides of the coin, and you decide. And whether, uh, if you decide whether it's right or wrong, you go ahead with that. Don't look back. So this is what we have been told and we have been trained on that. So uh, since beginning of my leadership role, I never look back. Fine, I, even if I've taken wrong decisions a number of times, you know, management has supported me. Fine, you've taken wrong decision, just move on. We'll do a course correction later on. Okay, because if you keep the, you know, getting back to the correction part, right, you'll never go up. So this is what we tried. One is being assertive. And uh, uh, second thing is be a good facilitator or moderator. And third one is conflict management. You know, um, how tactfully you are managing the conflicts uh, within the team, being very unbiased and, uh, you know, uh, providing straight feedback. So uh, I'm sure you would be knowing about it in uh, Oracle and all those stuff. You used to have a 360 degree feedback. Okay, that really helped in terms of when we um, you know, going to leadership role, this 360 degree feedback, it really helped us. And uh, we started looking at everything very objectively. Okay. So if anybody criticizes you, fine, take it objectively and move on from there. So um, the other point, you know, I don't know, basically in the Oracle HR, right, they always talk about, you know, um, don't get into arguments, get into discussions. But, you know, unfortunately, it never happened. We used to have lots of arguments kind of a thing. But, you know, that particular portion, right, that particular part, no arguments and discussions, right? That is no still, uh, we need to really work on that. That is not happening. Uh, so, Mr. Govind, I have a question now. Yeah. Uh, I, I really wanted to come in with some questions, but I held myself back. So, now my uh, question is, um, I see that you have a very uh, interesting experience of uh, working on value system and you've seen it firsthand in children, right? Like, you must have tried a lot of experiments and you're seeing uh, results of it now. And you've also seen your own journey in uh, corporate, uh, you know, uh, from an individual contributor to being a leader to starting your own organization. So from all these experiences, now how do you personally go about recruiting people? So what kind of individuals do you like, uh, you know, hiring? Um, Atharun, I'll tell you, I don't believe in qualification. The first thing. Okay. Um, Again, this particular skill is, and I would say that, you know, um, certain things by instinct you do it and uh, certain you do a kind of rational thinking you do it, right? Depends on the candidate. Okay. But by instinct, when I do it, I just look at the attitude of the person and, you know, I want go-getters in the in my team. Hmm. Go-getters in my team. And uh, they should have fire in the belly. 
okay so this by instinct i pick up few guys i may go wrong but still you know 80% of the time you know i when i gone right so that's one thing second thing is very really rational thinking because you know it depends on the customer requirements where when we really look at the uh, the skill set for the particular customer see freshers i can go with the right attitude but when i uh, get into the mid level position and senior level position you know it is purely on the uh, on the merit of the particular role okay um there you you know uh, you have to weigh your uh, your strengths also there you need to really go with your strength in terms of identifying the right right skill out there okay suppose my strength is you know to um to see i mean one of the strength everyone possesses basically they they just look at the person and you know started uh, start to judge or you know uh, reading the particular person's mind kind of a stuff i don't have that skill okay okay my skill set is lies different my strength is basically probing more i probe a lot okay i engage the particular person in the, into meaningful discussion about the role he played in the previous organization and the kind of role he is going to play in the organization. so i'm just looking at the the comparative part how he is thinking the the new role in a different is he thinking in a different perspective or uh, you know the same kind of perspective where he is in currently so i just look i was doing a kind of more of probing and uh, before i decide okay this guy would fit the bill okay so over here i just look at the uh, skills is basically there are two things i look at it one is this kind of his persuasive skills because being a, a senior developer or senior kind of a manager kind of a thing right and plus the client role client uh, you know client interfacing role kind of a thing then you need to have lots of uh, negotiation persuasive skills because the customer would demand certain things but you know you know that technologically we may not be able to, it's not viable or feasible to do it so we need to really persuade the person what is the best practice you know around the world and that would that particular best practice would really help them to grow so the kind of negotiation persuasive skills whether that particular person is having it or not i would look at it okay and second thing is uh, you know i would always look at i won't be looking you know looking at you know the whether he has got uh, uh, very good knowledge on the technology and the strength on the particular technology okay i always look at the appreciation of the technology part because in the industry it industry right you know uh every year the you know based on the customer whims and fancies the technology stack changes okay especially the departmental solution right so this year if you look at it i take the example of hdfc bank so they were my primary customer when i was in oracle so they had db2 as well as oracle db okay and when oracle db came in you know, 12 g came into the picture they hesitate they were hesitating to migrate to 12g because the db2 was in different lower version kind of a thing and uh, they worried that these guys you know will be moving to the dbs will move to oracle by learning you know oracle db technique kind of a thing is a basically a kind of security issues you know highly they felt even highly insecure kind of a thing so this is a going to be the the problem with every customer whenever the new technology comes you know they they feel that you know they are highly insecure kind of thing so we need somebody who can go and talk to the customer uh, giving the benefits of the new technology having a very good you know conversation discussion and persuasion skills so this one is very important and appreciation of technology is very good is good enough for me there because we, uh, we don't want the technical guy go do a deep dive and talking about too many technical things wherein they confuse the end customers we don't want that so i want this kind of a project man i mean kind of a technical manager to have a technology appreciation and plus you know the kind of a skills which requires to convince the customers so this is what i look at my uh, you know team members rather than you know uh, spending uh, time on uh, uh, quizzing him on technology part and all this because uh, technology anybody can learn if they know java they can learn python okay so if they know python they can learn something else so there's no stopping at all okay so i that's why i don't you know really mind you know uh, uh, getting into the kind of deep into the you know quizzing them on uh, technical skills i said okay fine attitude is good very good learning ability is there very good uh, love uh, to learn more quick yes. follow up question uh, what percentage of people in the indian it industry do you think 
resonate with similar uh, value system while hiring? Okay. Um, okay, this is my, I, what I told you about my personal thing. Okay, but you know, in uh, India, if you look at it, uh, when you go to the, uh, okay, let me divide into two things. One is in Oracle, when we go to campus, the instruction from Oracle management is different. Okay. They said, okay, if they clear the test, take them in and we train them up. Hmm. So we don't have any, because you know about right now, nowadays, you know, everything is go through the test, technical test. So if they're technically good, fine, let them be in. Don't worry about the communication part. Don't worry about anything else. Just bring them in and do that. This is what Oracle does, Microsoft does, Google does, and everybody. They don't give damn to any of their soft skills part. Okay. As long as you are able to communicate, it's enough. If you look at uh, TCS or uh, HCL interviews, if you look at it, they go through multiple rounds. They look at the, the soft nature of the particular person as well. Okay. So they look at, you know, uh, how you are good at interpersonal skills. Okay. Um, uh, how good uh, you are uh, with the mood swings because the kind of question they ask, your mood swings. So they look at, they observe that as well. So it depends on the company. The You know, I'm in the panel of uh, uh, Cognizant right now on the interview panel. The, in the, the HR director informs us, you know, only one thing. Boss, you get uh, the senior level profile with this kind of skill set. That's it. Don't look at any other stuff. Okay. So for them is basically is billability is important. Okay. If they take people, right, right from the day one, they should be billable. That's all they wanted. Okay. If they make money with the from that guy for one year, right, even if he leaves after one year, they don't care about it. Because the billability is one thing and uh, uh, building the organization is another thing. So they have certain rules for building the organization. In Oracle or Microsoft or Google, right, they don't care about all this stuff because they get people. For them, is billability is very important. They just take the people on billability quotient part. So it depends on the companies. Absolutely depends on the company. In Oracle, we were doing only this one, whether it's billable or not. That's all. Got it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Govind. Uh, so... Uh, now, since we are coming to the conclusion, so generally, Mr. Govind, uh, we have a ritual in DT. We conclude all the sessions with reflections. So uh, I'd like to request uh, you guys to come in with a reflection. Who'd like to go in first with a reflection? I think there were a lot of nice threads. Uh, if one of you wants to go in, that'd be great. Come on, folks. Who wants to go in first with a reflection? Yeah, thank you, Wamsi. Thank you for taking the initiative. Over to you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Tarun, and thank you, sir, for uh, this uh, opportunity. So, yeah, from the uh, conversation, I got an understanding that whenever you're building a solution, uh, you know, uh, you need to satisfy all the stakeholders, uh, not only the end customer that, uh, you know, that your product will be using, but you need to satisfy all the stakeholders that are uh, coming in the way, the, uh, you know, like, as you said, uh, like, uh, you know, the end customer and also the company's management, uh, which will be focusing on ROI and also TCO, uh, the uh, cost of the ownership. So uh, uh, this is one of the main, uh, uh, you know, one of the main uh, uh, insight that I got from this conversation. Yeah. Uh, thank you. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you, Vamsi. Who wants to go in next with your reflection? Yeah, Ramana, please go uh, I mean, there are a lot of interesting things. I guess me a lot of takeaways that I have is around leadership. I know how you grow when you grow in a, a role or in an organization. How you focus on your teams and uh, hiring people as well, right? Like from uh, focusing on domain knowledge before addressing a solution versus uh, you know how you intercommunicate when you become a team leader. How you hire you know your next uh, team people in your organizations and all, but. Uh, something very interesting was one for me, the whole value system. And uh, when you mentioned about tasks and, you know, at Oracle leadership, how uh, big organizations, when they look for leadership roles, how they groom leadership roles, I think those insights were a little different for, uh, you know, somebody like a, a youngster for me, but then, you know, how large organizations deal. Uh, yes, sir. 
thank you thanks a lot for uh, spending time today thank you ranganath uh, anyone else wants to go into the reflection yeah omkar please go ahead actually i got lots of insights so as uh, sir told that while hiring how we hires generally how we hires the individual based on not the hard skills or based on the soft skills but so, like i was uh, thinking like but from first to for our fourth time fourth year we are taught on more focused on hard skills and how we can learn that but as sir told that he is starting value systems from right from first standard of the student now i can relate that trait that yes if every education system starts from the first standard except like we can uh, more focused on soft skills then automatically this process may get different in upcoming years thank you, thank you. Uh, omkar uh, i'd like to go in with my uh, reflections mr govin so uh, yeah. i think while you were talking about the education system it uh, took me to a parallel of the japanese uh, education system where there's not much of a concern around the marks or the so called merit but to create good citizens and the spirit of volunteerism that you described that students do not need somebody to discipline them but it comes from within i thought that was uh, nice and uh, i really like the loop that you described that if the happiness is in place and if they are actually able to go back home and describe that sense of excitement to come back to school voluntarily than being dragged to school i thought that's nice because interestingly a deep thought as well we like to have reflection so that at the end of each day we reflect and come back to work with yeah. excitement right so i thought that was a very interesting uh, thread and uh, i mean one of my i think biggest action items is to uh, research more about tas and what they do because uh, we are in the od space and uh, okay. you know admit with embarrassment that i did not hear about this organization so i would want to uh, read okay. more about them and uh, this uh, thread that you mentioned about uh, being assertive uh i think i would want to make a 30 second reel out of it trim it out and play it to every micro leader that we hire because okay. uh, self doubt or imposter you know hanuman ji is our brand ambassador right we all have that hey. imposter syndrome so i thought that piece that you mentioned about need to be assertive that you have got the management support you have a job to do i thought was uh, nice so yeah i think there are many more threads but i probably confining myself to these uh, given the time constraint thanks a lot this is very yeah, insightful sure. session and i hope this video recording would help many more you know youngsters in getting this very valuable knowledge okay, okay. thanks mate thank you guys